MCQs on anti-cancer agents part 2 select the alkylating agent from the following options are a 5 fluorouracil b doxorubicin c cyclophosphamide and d vincristine here one of the drug which is acting like an alkylating agent is the cyclophosphamide so cyclophosphamide is a nitrogen mustard which acts as an alkylating acid but let us see what are the other drugs given here and uh, what is the category they belong to 5 fluorouracil 5 fluorouracil is a one of an anti metabolite and it is a one of a pyrimidine analog thereby it is going to inhibit the dna synthesis and 5 fluorouracil is going to inhibit the thymidine synthesis thereby it inhibits the dna synthesis and the drug is the doxorubicin as the suffix rubicin indicates these are the anthracycline antibiotics these drugs can act at the dna level and they can cause the damage of the dna third drug is the cyclophosphamide cyclophosphamide is one of an alkylating acid and fourth one is the vincristine vincristine is a one of a natural alkaloid and it is acting like a spindle poison it is an anti mitotic uh, drug which is going to inhibit the mitosis where it inhibits the conversion of the beta tubules into microtubules in this way the given four drugs are belonging to the different categories among these cyclophosphamide is acting like an alkylating acid so this is the structure of the cyclophosphamide now let us see how the cyclophosphamide acts as an alkylating acid we can observe two side chains in the cyclophosphamide which are identical and these side chains are attached to the nitrogen of the amine group so here this is the alpha carbon and this is a beta carbon so what is this side chain this side chain is nothing but the beta chloroethyl side chain this beta chloroethyl side chain is present two times on the nitrogen so now these groups can be called as uh, bis n and 2 chloroethyl amino groups so this group is responsible for the action of this drug as an alkylating acid now in this structure the chlorine acts as a better leaving group so chlorine can be removed so that this cyclophosphamide can form an intermediate which is having the aziridinium ion now this aziridinium ion is uh, highly reactive so it can interact with any nucleophilic site so within the dna the nucleophilic sites are going to be attacked by this aziridinium ion now when it attacks the the aziridinium ring is going to be opened and then it attacks the nucleophilic site so that it can form a linkage with the nucleophilic site of the DNA strand. In this way, one of the side chain form a one linkage and another side chain can form a second linkage. So that now within the DNA strand, they can form either interstrand cross linkage or intrastrand cross linkage. So cyclophosphamide is an alkylating agent because it is having a better leaving group, the chlorine. When the chlorine is going to be removed, it forms a very reactive intermediate that is the aziridinium ion this aziridinium ion can attack the nucleophilic site of the dna so that it can form a cross linkage between the strands of the dna so in the given question cyclophosphamide is the one of the drug acting as an alkylating acid next question rituximab is particularly used for a breast cancer b b cell lymphomas c prostate cancer and d renal tumor so the right answer is B cell lymphomas. Rituximab can be identified by its suffix MAB. MAB is the monoclonal antibodies. In the cancer chemotherapy, we can use the different types of monoclonal antibodies which are used specifically against a particular cancer. Now let us see what are the different types of monoclonal antibodies and how they are going to be used in the different clinical settings. For metastatic colorectal cancer, we can use the three types of monoclonal antibodies. The first one is the bevacizumab and second one is the cetuximab and third one is the panitumumab. These three monoclonal antibodies are used for the metastatic colorectal cancer. Among these bevacizumab is going to target again is the VEGF that is a vascular endothelium growth factor. Similarly cetuximab and panitumumab can act on a common target that is the EGFR epidermal growth factor receptor in this way monoclonal antibodies can antagonize the actions of the growth factor so that they can control the proliferation of the cancerous cells
other drugs are rituximab rituximab is specifically acting against the cd20 cells so cd20 cells are present in the b cells so rituximab can be used in the b cell lymphomas and trastuzumab can target the her2 the human epidermal growth factor receptor 2 these receptors are abundant in the breast tissue so trastuzumab can be used in the treatment of metastatic breast cancer so these are the different types of monoclonal antibodies which are used in the treatment of cancer chemotherapy. Among these, rituximab is one of the drugs which is specifically acting on the CD20 cells, thereby it can act against the B cell lymphomas. Choose the wrong combination of drug and mechanism. Option A, etoposide inhibition of the topoisomerase 1, B, cytarabine inhibition of the DNA polymerase, C, busulfon dna strand cross linking and d pentostatin inhibition of the adenosine deaminase enzyme so here we have to select what is the wrong combination of the drug and its mechanism so here the right answer is etoposide etoposide is uh, not working by inhibition of the topoisomerase 1 but actually it is going to be acting on the topoisomerase 2 again let us see how these uh, listed drugs are acting Cytarabine. Cytarabine is also called as the cytosine arabinoside. So it is uh, commonly denoted as ARAC, ARAC. This cytosine arabinoside can undergo the phosphorylation so that it can produce the cytosine arabinoside triphosphate, which is indicated as ARACTP. So this is done by the host kinases. Now in the form of triphosphate, this drug can inhibit the DNA polymerase so that it can inhibit the DNA synthesis. In this way, cytarabine is a DNA polymerase inhibitor and inhibits the DNA synthesis. But in order to inhibit the DNA polymerase, it should be initially converted into a triphosphate form. And the drug is the busulfon. Busulfon can undergo the sulfur stripping and it can form an intermediate just like the azeridinium ion. It can form a sulfonium ion so that this again can act as an alkylating acid. Since it is acting as an alkylating agent, can produce the inter or intra strand cross linkage within the DNA. Etoposide. Etoposide is one of the drugs which is going to inhibit the topoisomerase 2 enzyme, thereby it inhibits the DNA synthesis. Topoisomerase 2 is also called as DNA gyrase. So etoposide is going to inhibit the DNA gyrase, thereby it inhibits the DNA synthesis. And fourth drug is the pentostatin. Pentostatin is an adenosine deaminase inhibitor. This enzyme is responsible for conversion of the adenosine to the inosine. So a pentostatin can inhibit this conversion, thereby they can inhibit the purine metabolism. So these are the four drugs that are given in the options. And among these, etoposide is uh, not acting on the topoisomerase 1, it is acting on the topoisomerase 2. Which of the following is a non-steroidal aromatase inhibitor? Options are A. Tryptorelin, B. Eximistain, C. Bicalutamide, and D. Letrozole. So the right answer is the Letrozole. Here the Eximistain is also acts as an aromatase inhibitor, but it is not a non-steroidal, it is a steroidal aromatase inhibitor. So the right answer is the Letrozole. Again let us see what are the other drugs listed here and what is their category. First one is the Tryptorelin. The suffix relin indicates it is a gonadotropin releasing hormone analog. We can observe few of the drugs like the goserelin, buserelin, as well as luprorelin. All these are having the suffix relin. So these are related to the tryptorelin. That means all these are gonadotropin releasing hormone analogs. How these drugs are acting? The gonadotropin releasing hormone is controlling the release of the gonadotrophs like the follicle stimulating hormone and luteinizing hormone. But when this gonadotropin releasing hormone is given externally, it is going to inhibit the follicle stimulating hormone and luteinizing hormone secretion by negative feedback mechanism. In this way, these drugs can control the release of the gonadotropes. And then the drug given in the options is the bicalutamide. Again, we can observe the suffix lutamide. Lutamide indicates it is an anti-androgen. These drugs are particularly used in the treatment of prostate cancer. Now other types of drugs given in the options are the aromatase inhibitors. Aromatase inhibitors are two types steroidal as well as non-steroidal. Among the steroidal one of the drug existing now is the eximistine. 
and non steroidal drugs is the amino glutamide amino glutamide is a first generation non steroidal aromatase inhibitor but the new generation drugs include anastrozol and letrozol again we can observe the suffix trozol they indicates the aromatase inhibitors and non steroidal aromatase inhibitors are having less side effects compared with the steroidal aromatase inhibitors now what is the role of these aromatase inhibitors aromatase inhibitors are important in the post menopausal women where they can synthesize the estrogen from the androgens within the synthesis of the androgens androstenedione dione is one of the important intermediate which can be converted into the estrone by the enzyme aromatase similarly testosterone can also be converted into estradiol these two steps are mediated by the important enzyme aromatase so aromatase inhibitors can inhibit this important step so that they can inhibit the synthesis of the estrogens within the post menopausal woman so that's why aromatase inhibitors are highly useful in the post menopausal breast cancer next question which of the following drug requires hydrocortisone supplement when it is used in the chemotherapy options are a amino glutamate b goserelin c tamoxifen and d anastrozol so here the right answer is the amino glutamate amino glutamate is one of the drug which is going to inhibit the aromatase enzyme because of inhibition of this aromatase enzyme it can inhibit the synthesis of the estrone and estradiol in the post menopausal woman at the same time this am amino glutamate can inhibit the adrenal hormone synthesis so it can inhibit the cortisol levels as the cortisol levels are decreased it can increase the release of the acth by a compensatory feedback mechanism now when the amino glutamide is used acth levels can be increased which results in the increased cortisol levels when we give a glucocorticoid externally we can suppress the raised levels of the acth so hydrocortisone can be given in order to counteract this the raised levels of acth when this glucocorticoid is given externally because of the negative feedback mechanism acth levels can be controlled so that's why amino glutamide is given along with the hydrocortisone to suppress the raised acth levels 